Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Insanity is doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over again, thinking this time it's going to be different. That is crazy. You're probably here for one of four reasons. Either you like Arkham, you like gaming challenges, you like Arkham challenges, or you accidentally clicked on this video. But because there are no accidents, I'll get right to the point. I'm going to try to beat Batman Arkham City without ever taking damage for the entire run. If I take damage, I have to start the whole game over from the very beginning. Just think of it like the I am the night mode from Arkham Origins, just infinitely more painful. To make things a bit more manageable, I will be doing this challenge on the easy difficulty because otherwise I will lose my sanity. After seeing so many other YouTubers try various Arkham challenges, I decided to try my hand at this style of video, and just start off with one of the hardest challenges I could think of. Keep in mind that the Catwoman missions won't count for the purposes of this video, because when the game first came out, they were a pre-order bonus, meaning that her missions are technically DLC. This game is long enough as it is, so please guys, let me have this. I don't want to watch the credits roll, only to have to worry about Two-Face's boss fight at the end of the Catwoman missions. Finally, while working on this video, I found another YouTuber who has completed this challenge on hard difficulty, so I will link his channel and video in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. Seriously, this guy is really really good at beating games without taking damage, and I'm pretty sure he's the first one to do so for Arkham City. The purpose of this video is not to find out if the challenge was possible, since we already know it is. The goal is to find out whether or not I'm capable of beating it, while hopefully entertaining you guys with the story of my slow descent into insanity. Also, it was a video by Big Boy What that inspired this one, where he did this challenge for Spider-Man Miles Morales, so the link to that video will also be in the description. I would not recommend anyone else try this, mostly because this video took way too much time out of my life, and I would not want anyone else to go through the same level of boredom and frustration that this challenge provided. Anyways, the fact that you're still watching means a lot, so let's get into it. Was this a bad idea? Absolutely. Can I take back any of the time I spent on this video? Unfortunately, no. Well, might as well get something out of this insane challenge, so hopefully you enjoy watching my slow descent into absolute madness. <laughs> I start the game by looking into the lovely eyes of the one and only Hugo Strange. He tells me about Protocol 10 and I try to escape only to be stopped by a tiger guard. Apparently, Penguin wanted a billionaire playboy for Christmas, as I am promptly delivered to him on the outskirts of Arkham City. He tries to get some good old fashioned revenge only to realize that punching is a lot harder with a broken wrist. After beating up all the thugs, I head to the courthouse to help Catwoman. While fighting the thugs inside, I have to be mindful of Two-Face's gun, which could very well shoot me and cause me to take damage. Maybe if I was paying attention, I might have been able to avoid him, but because I'm an idiot, I get shot. Oh well, back to the the beginning we go, and there goes any hopes of getting this on the first try. Once I get back to the courthouse, I discover my best friend in the whole wide world, which in this case is evading. This is because first, I have no friends, and second, it is extremely useful for avoiding enemy attacks. Specifically, evading over an enemy basically makes you immune from taking damage in almost every single scenario, and is much more effective than evading in a random direction. After scanning the bullet and heading to the church, I complete a very easy tutorial stealth section, and Joker tells me about his trap. Now it's on to the steel mill, where I discover one of the unfortunate things about this run. The the AR challenges you need to complete in order to get the grapnel boost upgrade take too long to be considered time efficient and worth doing for every single attempt. This means I never got to play the game with the grapnel boost, and instead had to work with just dive bombs and normal grapples. I will say that this made me appreciate the gliding mechanics a lot more, but I still wish I had access to the increased speed and height that the grapnel boost provides. I enter the steel mill Santa Claus style and face a bunch of thugs in the cargo bay, only to be hit in the skull with a crate. Not only is this a definite concussion, but it's also a complete restart. After retracing my steps, I'm finally back to the cargo bay and have to go rescue a doctor. I reach a very basic stealth section followed by a second one that I was able to complete no problem because of way too many inverted takedowns. While the key to combat is to evade, the key to stealth is to develop a pattern and follow that pattern every single time. An offensive approach is often the best one to take, and this way you can complete predator sections quickly and efficiently. Plus, the more times you practice, the better you get. Back at the cargo bay, I have to face Mr. Hammer, who is no problem thanks to the special combo bat swarm I purchased with my first upgrade point. This is because, as long as I constantly use this move, he will always be stunned and won't have any time to attack, while the swarm itself keeps other goons at bay long enough for me to build the combo back up to 8 so I can repeat the process. Good thing he didn't put bats as a weakness on his resume, because otherwise he might not have gotten the gig with Mr. J. After being knocked out by the old fake Joker gag, I wake up to one of the only unskippable cutscenes in the whole game. All things considered, this is definitely the best scene to have to watch the whole way through, as Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy's performances are fantastic, not to mention it hits so differently now that Kevin is no longer with us. May he rest in peace. Anyways, it's cure time, and one of the advantages of playing this game so many times is that you know exactly where to go next, which 
which in this case is the DCPD building. It's here where I find my next best friend, smoke pellets. These things are great for defense, but even more deadly for offense, because if you use them right, you can take out two to three enemies without any trouble. I interrogate the last thug and head to the museum, only to have to go back outside to destroy some jammers. After a combat section and two predator encounters, I'm able to destroy all the jammers and head back to the museum, where I run into our good old pal, Bernard the T-Rex. Yes, I gave him a name, because he either doesn't have one, or he does, and I never knew about it. I rescue the first cop and reach the gladiator pit, where I'm faced with more enemies than good jokes I've ever told in my entire life. No big deal, I've been getting pretty good at this game, but apparently not good enough, because yet another crate gets me in the noggin. Resisting the urge to make my controller a permanent part of my monitor, I am forced to delete the save file and prepare for another restart. After many failed attempts and tears shed, not actually, okay maybe a little bit, I get back to the gladiator pit where I'm able to defeat the thugs with a large dose of evades, as well as batterings to take out the enemies who are about to throw crates. Luckily the titan is not too much of a problem, and now it's onto the ice skating rink. Even though it's not in season, I decide to indulge myself and try to perfect my triple axle, but I guess Tiny is a big skating fan. Okay, seriously though, I rescue the cops in the room that has Frieza's suit, then head to Victor's not so ideal vacation spot. I notice three propane tanks in the room, waiting to be used by enemies in a menacing fashion. Having the big brain that I do, I explode them with batterings to eliminate the added risk during the next combat section that throwable objects provide, only to then be greeted by the Kool-Aid man himself. <laughs> I'm able to defeat Mr. Sickle and his minions, then head back to the room with Frieza's suit to get the Disruptor so I can finally face Cobblepot. Now, there are about four major roadblocks of this challenge. The first was inattention, due to the fact that I had to do a lot of attempts, and I mean a lot. I'll give the total at the end of the video. I would often put on music, or even a YouTube video in the background, meaning a lot of times I wasn't completely focused and it would result in a simple error. Was this my fault? Absolutely, and this is not in any way an excuse for why I had so many failed attempts. The second roadblock was impatience. When you have to do the same things over and over again, there comes a lot of boredom to the point when I found myself trying to rush a lot of the combat and stealth sections only to take damage because of my lack of caution. As I made it further into the challenge, I got a lot better at staying focused, which caused me to go even further into the game as I continued to practice. The third problem was curveballs, meaning moments that were unexpected and unusual when compared to a typical run, which most of the time happened during stealth. Whether it was the thug staying still, moving to a new position, or even just looking up with gargoyles, most of the time I could react adequately and clear the section without any problems, but sometimes it would take me by surprise and cause me to slip up and take damage. Because of these first three reasons, by the time I reached Penguin for the first time, I had already done over 50 attempts. This leads to by far the biggest challenge of the entire video, boss fights. There are four boss fights in this game, and these cause a large amount of failed attempts and restarts. Is this because I'm bad at the game? Maybe. However, the main reasons why there are so many restarts was because of the limited ability to follow a pattern in these fights, and the fact that I was stupid and didn't practice each fight beforehand as much as I should have. Back to the run, I arrive at the Iceberg Lounge and give Penguin the ability to be like other birds, where he receives bonus points for the additional airtime. To give some context as to how long it took to get to the spot, here's a montage of me taking damage for your personal enjoyment. Hold still while I- There's a fight going on I know, I know, I must be really bad at this game, but at least I've come this far without completely giving up. That being said, this might be where I admit defeat because it's time for the Solomon Grundy boss battle. Now, the first phase is not so bad, because oftentimes you can completely deplete his health bar before he's even able to attack. Simply quick fire some explosive gel on one of the generators and detonate it as fast as possible. Reach the second one and wait for the electricity to go away, then repeat the process. Grundy will be stunned long enough for you to do it one more time with the third generator. Sometimes Grundy might be able to get off an attack, so it's important to be prepared and prioritize dodging his attack before destroying the third generator. After phase one is complete, it's time for the hardest phase in the whole fight. Here, Grundy has four main attacks. One of them is throwing his chain three times at the player's location. It's easy to dodge, but it's also important to avoid the fire left behind each attack, because otherwise you could take damage. His next attack is where he jumps right towards the player, which can be avoided by an evade or a counter. The final two are by far the trickiest, as he will swing his chains in a circle either low to the ground or at the player's head level. If it's low, you have to time your evades to dodge the attacks, but if it's high, all you need to do is crouch. The the problem comes with the fact that it's often really hard to tell if the chains are going to be higher or lower before it's too late, and you have to worry about this while trying to place explosive gel on the generators. Keep in mind, on a normal playthrough, this boss is a piece of cake, but when there's less margin for error, you're much more likely to take damage, which is exactly what happened to me. Since this was already after over 50 attempts, morale was not high and this challenge was starting to feel really impossible. Well, back to Hugo, the church, Steel Mill, DCPD, Hey Bernard, and finally, back to Grundy. Surely this time will be better, and I take damage again. Again, and again, and again. Then I take damage against Two Face. Then I take damage against Joker's goons. Then a gun. Then a crate. Then the freaking smoke from the pipes under the steel mill. 
then Mr. Hammer, then fire, then I get shot, then shot again, then I fall off a building at the beginning of the game. Finally back to Grundy, and I take damage in phase 2. Again, did I mention this video was a bad idea? Now I'm no longer mad, because every failed attempt just makes me numb and disappointed, realizing that I have to subject myself to yet another run through the exact same game. With every failed attempt at Grundy came 10 more failed runs earlier in the story. I just want to play games for fun again, but I had given myself the impossible task of this challenge and now there was no going back. Okay, there was totally an option for giving up, but how else was I supposed to prove myself as a legitimate Arkham YouTuber? Determined to keep trying, and after many more frustrating attempts and hours spent, I finally cleared Phase 2, and now it was time for the last phase. Luckily, it's a lot easier than Phase 2, but that doesn't make it a walk in the park. It's important to note that in between phases, there is a quick time event where you have to spam the A or X button, depending on your console. While the outside edges of the screen start to flicker similar to when you're taking damage, this doesn't count as a failed run because first off, the event is unavoidable, and secondly, your health bar doesn't actually go down as long as you spam fast enough. So as much as I would like to say that that's the end of the challenge, I must continue for the sake of this video and move on to phase 3. The strategy is basically to evade over his electric shock attacks, making sure to be able to tell the difference between his two attacks. Most of the time, Grundy's chain ball lands relatively far away, meaning you have to wait and time your dodges. But in all of the other cases, the chain lands right next to your location, meaning you have to evade right away. Luckily, it's very easy to tell the difference between the two, mostly because Grundy telegraphs the second attack very clearly. Finally, you need to throw batter to deal with the little mice things that come your way after blowing up each generator, as they will make you take damage if you don't pay attention to them. Okay, so it's hard enough to beat phase 2, and it's kind of tricky for phase 3, but to do both perfectly is even more difficult. One mistake, and the whole run turns into my mom's nickname for me. Failure. Keep in mind, the time it took to get back to Grundy in one attempt was about an hour, meaning every attempt was a lot of the same stuff over and over again for long periods of time. After many failed attempts on phases 2 and 3, and an occasional phase 1 failure that took me by surprise, as well as numerous attempts of taking damage in the moments before the boss fight, I was finally able to beat Grundy and took out his heart in the completely non-lethal way. I mean, you probably saw this coming because of how long this video is, but anyways. I was so relieved, and luckily Cobblepot's rockets were very easy to dodge, meaning they weren't a real issue. Never has a beatdown been so satisfying. Now another thing that was really tricky to figure out was finding the time to attempt each challenge. A lot of time that I would normally use to play games for fun had to be used to really focus on getting better at not taking damage, making my video game experience feel like a strange version of Groundhog Day. Now I normally play games on my PS5, but part of me wished that I could play Arkham City on my laptop so I could have the portability and convenience that PC games provide. The problem is that my laptop isn't capable of running any of the Arkham games, meaning I don't have any option to play Arkham City on PC. Not to mention I won't have a lot of storage to download the game in the first place. Luckily, both of these problems can be fixed with the sponsor of today's video, Boostroid. Now, as a big Arkham fan, I would love to play Batman Arkham Origins whenever I want, but I can't since it hasn't been remastered on the PS5 and I don't have my Xbox 360 with me at college. Ideally, it would be nice to have the game on PC, but my laptop doesn't have the technological capabilities to run the game correctly, and I really don't want to have to purchase a gaming PC right now. Boostroid is a subscription-based cloud gaming provider that allows you to play a wide selection of already purchased or free-to-play games on Steam through an online server. Because it's through the cloud, you don't need to have a high powered PC as Boostroid does all the work for you. You can pay a monthly subscription or a yearly purchase to use Boostroid whenever you want during that period. They were kind enough to let me try out their service for myself, and it was very easy to link Boostroid to my Steam account. I bought Arkham Origins and didn't even have to download the game. All I had to do was open Boostroid and voila, I could play Arkham Origins on my laptop. Keep in mind that gameplay is dependent on the connection and device of the user, so make sure to put that into consideration before purchasing a subscription, and make sure to use their free connection tester that they have on their website, linked in the description as well. While performance varies based on connection, I was pleasantly surprised with my experience. Thanks to Boosteroid, I'm able to play Batman Arkham Origins on my laptop without needing to buy a high quality gaming PC, and the servers cover a vast amount of games all available after purchasing on Steam. As with any cloud gaming service, make sure that your connection and device can properly make use of Boosteroid. Check the link in the description to try out their services or to use their free connection tester. And thanks again to Boosteroid for sponsoring this video. Now back to the challenge, and the pain, and the frustration, and the victory. Grundy has been defeated, and I'm feeling a lot better about the challenge, but there's still a lot of game to go. And now it's on to following a blood trail. Luckily, I can just skip the trail altogether and go directly to where it ends. After chasing the ninja, I track her underneath the industrial district and head down to the sewers. The next section is where I'm introduced to crates containing guns. How lovely. And now it's a good time as any to take damage. The cat 
After chasing the ninja, I track her underneath the industrial district and head down to the sewers. Batman collapses and oh look, the health bar has gone down, so I guess that's the run. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll catch you later. <sighs> Except not really. Since it's a scripted event, unfortunately my suffering has not come to an end, and I must continue the story despite the depleted health bar. After many more attempts, I'm finally able to reach Wonder City, and it's here where I discover my least favorite enemies, ninjas. Hello there. They're fast, they have a lot of range, and they'll even dodge your attacks. You have a very small window to attack them, and if you slip up, there's no real margin for error. In Wonder City, there's a few moments where you're fighting them in tight spaces, making it very hard to see. This, in turn, makes it difficult to evade over them, meaning that if you can't do that, you will very likely get sliced up with their swords. Point is, I hate ninjas and they hate me, so at least the feeling is mutual. After what seems like an eternity, I complete the demon trials and finally arrive at Raish al Ghul's boss fight. This fight is split up into four phases, two involving combat and two involving quickfire gadgets. The combat is pretty straightforward. The real challenge is making sure to avoid Raish as he moves across the arena with a sweeping attack. The way you dodge is through evading, or using an instant takedown which makes you immune to this attack. The second and fourth phases were tricky because you have to fire the wreck gun at the right moments to make him take damage while avoiding his sword, shurikens, and blades that slide to your location. There's a lot of moving parts and different attacks you have to take care of, while making sure to find the opening to fire the wreck gun at Raish. Now I knew this was going to be tricky, so I used a tactic from one of Big Boy What's videos and pulled up a separate save file of the game, using it for practice. I practiced over and over, again and again, but could never seem to develop a system which would guarantee that I could beat the fight without taking damage. The most common failed attempt happened when I would evade away from shurikens only to roll right into a set of blades. The second phase and first quick fire phase was much easier because his attacks weren't as aggressive and the window to fire the wreck gun was much wider. But the fourth phase is where things started to get really tricky, just like the MCU. I practiced as much as I could and hoped that Raish would only use his sword for most of the fight, since it's the easiest attack to dodge. Finally, after all the hard work and practice, I actually tried the boss fight on my challenge save file and took damage in the second phase. <sighs> Anyways, Protocol 10. Break Penguin's hand. Stop Two-Face and Church in Flames. Cure to be found? Head underground. Skate on some ice? Grundy ain't nice. Starting to get bored? Well, I took damage from a sword. Did I mention I hate ninjas? Frustration continued to build as I would take damage all over the place, whether it be to combat, stealth, ninjas, or even running into the stupid fire because I wasn't paying attention. Even when I was able to get back to the race fight, I always made at least one mistake that made me take damage. And to make matters worse, Grundy was becoming hard to beat as well. See, in his second phase, the generators will alternate between being open and closed, meaning that you might not destroy them if you detonate the gel at the wrong time. So sometimes, when you think you've completed the phase, you'll be surprised to find out that you actually didn't, and then proceed to get decked by Chain Ball. Sometimes I would take damage during phase 3 by incorrectly guessing where the shockwave would land, but the absolute worst phase was the second one, because by the time I knew whether or not Grundy would swing his chains above or below me, it was usually too late and I couldn't react in time. I once reached the fight on three different save files so that if I failed against Grundy, I could at least try again right away and not get rusty. While this seems like a good idea, I took damage all three times, which made me want to bang my head against my controller until I could forget about the stupid challenge. At this point, Grundy and I had started a rivalry, and there was no telling who would walk away as the victor. Sometimes I would win three in a row, sometimes he would win six in a row, but as I honed my skills, I got even better and started pulling off insane moves like dodging the shockwave and placing down explosive gel at the same time. I did find that the best strategy for Grundy's swinging chain attack was to run away as soon as you see him start to wind up. Keeping your distance should give you enough time to adequately react, and there's nothing wrong with evading an extra time just to be safe. Soon, Grundy became much more manageable, but every time I got past him, it was always a crate, gun, fist, or those stupid ninjas that caused me to take damage. And even when I got to Raish, there was always something that caused me to take damage. Let's do another montage. <laughs> Finally, after way too many attempts, I was able to get back to Raish, and I went back to practicing. It was here that I determined that the best way to avoid Raish's attacks was not to evade, but to run. It was all about never staying in one place, so that the blades would never appear at your current location. Plus, limiting how much I had to move kept me from being put in situations where damage was unavoidable. Finally, like Grundy's boss fight, it's important to keep your distance so you have as much time as possible to react to his attacks. After attempting the fight more times than the number of Batman reboots, and with a whole ton of close calls, I finally beat 
the head of the demon himself. You know what I said about Penguin's beatdown being the most satisfying? Yeah, I take it back. This one was even better. At this point, the run is starting to feel possible for the first time ever. Grundy is getting easier, and I just figured out how to beat Raish. Not to mention, combat and stealth were becoming second nature. I made my way to the surface, interrogated Quincy Sharp, and headed to the GCPD to confront Freeze. Out of all the boss fights, Freeze is by far the easiest one, as it's a lot easier to control the outcome, but that doesn't make it a guaranteed win. Since I'm playing on easy difficulty, I only need four takedowns, but finding the easiest ones to use was a little tricky. After much testing, I found the best order was silent takedown, followed by wreck gun, then disruptor, and finishing with a great takedown. One slight issue was the fact that a lot of times, for some inexplicable reason, no matter how hard I tried aiming the wreck gun at the generator, Batman would either fire at freeze or completely miss the generator altogether. Luckily, it was very easy to recover from this, and I found that a drop attack or glide kick was the next best option if that were ever to happen. Also, whenever he sent his drone things into the air to scan for heat signatures, it was always important to either hide in the grates or a place with cover overhead so they don't cause you to take damage by flying to your location. Finally, after much practice, I was able to defeat Mr. Freeze on my first try, and now I know the run is possible. Heading over to the steel mill, I was able to somehow avoid all of the snipers and arrive at the armed thugs guarding the outside. I was able to take out most of them until there were only two guards left. So just like any other stealth section, I threw a smoke pellet down and tried to take them out under the smoke's cover. But for some reason, instead of being confused and shooting into the air like they normally do, one of the guards starts shooting at me. I was so confused then shocked and finally angry because a stupid glitch had cost me the run. I took out my frustration on the rest of the thugs but kept the save file so I could use it for practice later on. Now I was annoyed because that was the farthest I had ever gone so of course I had to take damage in the most frustrating way. But if anything, it gave me hope that I could actually complete this challenge. Keep in mind that at this point I had done well over 100 attempts and with each one my frustration continued to increase. But I couldn't even get back to the same spot because I always took damage well before that point. I just wanted to be done with this challenge but I was determined that I would finish the game even if it would probably destroy the last remaining parts of my sanity. I kept at it and was able to beat Raish for a second time, then a third, and then a fourth, only to take damage to the sections right before freeze. One time I got hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. Another time I missed the window for a combat takedown only to get surprised with the fastest shield attack I've ever seen in my life. And my personal favorite is when I threw down a smoke pellet only to remember that enemies with goggles can still see you. But by that point I had already been spotted and received a warm welcome of bullets to my body. The long moments of boredom were always replaced with a feeling of hope and excitement anytime I made it past Grundy, only for that energy to be immediately brought down after taking damage yet again. Nothing will be ever as unsatisfying as the sound of someone's fist making contact with Batman, and it will probably remain in my nightmares for the rest of my life. What started as an experiment that was expected to last a month had turned into a multi-month process of sacrificing whatever time I could set aside for the stupid challenge, and using it to watch Hugo Strange giving the same speech over and over and over again. I got to my lowest point when I started taking damage near the beginning of the game, and soon, it was too much. I gave up complete- okay, just kidding, but I had to take a break. After a few days of recovery, which involved 100% completing Marvel's Spider-Man, I was able to return to the challenge, but only after realizing that balance was important. So, in order to prevent myself from going into insanity, I would play other games for fun in between attempts of the challenge. This was a big morale boost, and soon I was finally able to get back to Mr. Freeze and defeat him with ease. That was not supposed to rhyme. Now I had to get back to the steel mill, but there was one big problem. Snipers. They were all over the industrial district, and their long range made navigating the area almost impossible, and also meant that I unfortunately got shot and had to restart. Time for one more montage. He's back. Good job, that button. When I was finally able to get back to the previous spot, I determined that the best path was to actually go along the water to avoid the snipers altogether, and this strategy proved to be an effective one. It's important to note that before reaching this point, I decided to take a gamble and complete the remote hideaway mission so I could get the upgrade that allowed me to detonate mines with a disruptor so I could use it for one of the predator rooms. Inside the steel mill, I was feeling extremely confident because I decided to be smart for the first time in this whole challenge and had practiced all the sections beforehand until they became second nature. The disruptor upgrade proved to be very useful as it gave me two easy takedowns and helped me clear the room without any issues. Moving through the steel mill, past snipers, thugs, and mines, I finally reached the fight against Joker. Or, I guess Clayface. Oops! Uh, 
Spoilers. This was the ultimate test for combat. I had to deal with knives, crates, Mr. Hammer, a Titan, the IRS, and just to spice things up, a clay-faced joker who had quicker attacks and couldn't be defeated until the very end. I had practiced this fight more times than I could count, and now was the moment of truth. The fight started very well, and I made it halfway through without any problems. But unfortunately, it was to no avail, and I took damage from a knife. But instead of feeling defeated or angry, I felt determination. I knew that I could do this, and the very next run, I was able to get all the way past Raish before taking damage in the subway. While this might seem deflating, for me, it was unprecedented. I had just beaten Raish al Ghul twice in a row, a fight that I had previously only beaten six times out of over 150 runs. And here is where things started to click. I broke Cobblepot's hand for the thousandth time, rescued Catwoman yet again, defeated Grundy, and beat Raish for the third time in a row. I was able to best freeze in a fight with some improvisation, and finally made it back to the Joker fight. I hadn't even done any extra practice beforehand, and just went straight into the fight. After the most nerve-wracking five minutes of my life, I was finally able to defeat the Titan, Mr. Hammer, and take down Joker. I was pumped, but I could also feel nervous excitement. This could very well be the run. Now, since this was the remaster, I still had to get past the Catwoman missions. So after I finished that, I decided to not save Batman. Hey, look at that. The credits are rolling, which means the game is over. Well, that was fun. Thank you all so much for... No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Dang it. Obviously, this doesn't count. Not to mention, I wasn't counting the Catwoman missions as part of the run in the first place. So I guess I'm Batman again, and it's time to stop Protocol 10. Luckily, none of the helicopters noticed me, and I was able to scan enough of them to make my way to Wonder Tower to confront Hugo Strange. In front of me were two stealth encounters and two combat sections, which I was able to get past thanks to my practice and experimentation I had done beforehand. The combat was tricky because of the introduction of electric sticks. The stealth sections required much patience and the use of all my gadgets, especially the sonic battering, backclaw, and smoke pellets. My palms were sweating, and I was extremely nervous, but dang it, this man had given the same speech to me over 150 times. It was about time he got what was coming to him. Feeling the momentum of the run, I was able to clear out the combat and predator sections without any issues, and stop Protocol 10 only to find out that Joker wants to become immortal. I took out the snipers outside the theater in a very specific order so as to not get shot, and entered the Monarch Theater for my final challenge. Clayface. Now, Clayface might not be as hard as some of the other boss fights, but he is no pushover. For phase one, you simply dodge his attacks and lure him into the corners of the room where there are explosives. You only have to throw the freeze grenade a few times because the explosions will take care of the rest of his health bar, meaning you can focus a lot more on dodging Clayface's attacks instead of spamming the right trigger. You can use the same strategy for the second phase, but it's important to consider his two new attacks. The one I was worried about the most was the one where he spins around, causing a shower of clay to fly all over the place. It looked like there was no surefire way to to avoid this attack, but I found that you can actually tell a few seconds before whether to crouch or evade, based on the clay that appears before the ones you need to dodge. It's hard to explain, but trust me when I say that with a bit of practice, it's very easy to figure out how to dodge this attack. With this knowledge, you can advance to phase 3, which is luckily the easiest phase of the fight. You just have to employ your classic combat strategy of evading and then attacking, making sure to throw a freeze grenade at Clayface only after he's done spitting clay balls from his mouth. Yes, I really did say that. The first time he'll shoot once, the second time twice, and the final two will have three projectiles each. All of this data I had collected from my practice beforehand. And now, in the words of Zanny, with his entire moveset downloaded, it was time for my first real attempt at beating Clayface. Everything had been building to this moment. The triumphant victories, the devastating defeats, the long periods of boredom and the short bursts of excitement, the confusing and hilarious, and the tragic and demoralizing. It all came down to this. If I failed, I wasn't even sure if I was up for another attempt, but there was no going back. During the entire run, I wasn't necessarily nervous out of fear, but out of excitement. After so many attempts, this could be the moment when I achieved what I had thought to be impossible. But one slip up, one break out of concentration could result in another failed run. I felt locked in, like every decision I took and every move I made was automatic, like it was just instinct. Phase one, not a problem. Phase two, not even a close call. Finally, phase three, and unfortunately, I took damage. Okay, just kidding. Let's go! Yeah! Yeah! <sighs> 
And after all my failures and frustrations, my close calls and triumphs, I finally did it. Clayface was defeated on the first try and I had to pause the game and get up from my seat. To my surprise, it wasn't excitement that I felt or even the urge to scream for joy, which was a good thing for my roommate. Instead, I felt an intense feeling of relief, like a weight that was lifted from my shoulders. I had finally achieved what I had set out to do and I didn't have to worry about it anymore. I watched the best cutscene in the entire gameplay and just like the Joker, I had the biggest grin on my face, still in shock that I had finally done it. The final tally, 190 attempts. It was surreal and though I wasn't the first one to do it, I was certainly one of the only people to have ever done it before. It might not have been that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, but it was a big deal for me, as I can now say that I have successfully beaten Batman Arkham City without ever taking damage. Even if no one ever sees this video, it's something that I will never forget. Here are some final stats. 190 attempts. Well over 100 hours of my life that were completely wasted. I beat Grundy more times than I could count, but I beat Raish 9 times, Freeze 4 times out of 5, Joker once out of 2 attempts, and Clayface was 1 for 1. This is not a challenge I would recommend for other people, and I will never do anything hard again, but I will be trying other things very similar. I'm currently working on making videos of me doing this challenge for the Arkham DLC, which will luckily be much shorter and easier, so stay tuned for those. Now, if you ever want to see a walkthrough of my strategy for beating Arkham City that goes over every single part of the game, I might be up for that, so let me know in the comments. Also, if you're crazy enough to try this, please let me know how many attempts it took you, hopefully a lot less than me. I was a completely different gamer after this challenge, but I feel like one of the craziest things about this run is that despite playing this game so much, I still believe that it is a masterpiece and one of my favorite games of all time. There were so many cool details that I would find for the first time during attempt 52 or 124, and it's clear that this game was made with a lot of dedication and care. Thank you all so much for watching. This was by far the most time I've ever put into a single video, and the entire process has been months in the making. I sincerely appreciate all of you for making it to the end. Anyways, I'm gonna go take a nap. Arkham City might be a masterpiece, and I might be up for playing it for fun in the future, but for now, I need to take a long break from this game. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.